God just now, please. And I want you to turn with me to Paul's epistle to the Ephesians. Or sorry, Philippians, please. Paul's epistle to the Philippians. And we're in chapter number 4. Philippians chapter number 4. And we're going to commence reading from verse number 8, please. Philippians 4, and beginning to read at verse number 8. Paul writes, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing to the reading of His own precious truth. While he was in office, Sir Winston Churchill had many ways and wonderful sayings, sayings that carried with them quite a deal of weight. On one occasion, Sir Winston Churchill said, a pessimist, a pessimist is a person who sees the difficulty in every opportunity. A pessimist only sees the, sees the difficulty, sees the difficulty in everything. But an optimist, Churchill said, an optimist, is a person who sees an opportunity in every difficulty. A pessimist is a person who sees the difficulty in every opportunity. No matter where they look, all they see is a difficulty, whereby an optimist is a person who sees an opportunity in every difficulty. I wonder this morning, child of God, are you a pessimist Christian? For me and you, there's many pessimist believers. Or I wonder, are you an optimist Christian this morning? You say to me, George, what's a, a pessimist Christian? Well, a pessimist Christian is a person who sees nothing, only the problem, but they can't see God. But the optimist Christian, he's the Christian or she's the Christian who sees God but cannot see the problem even though it's there. King Saul was a pessimist. He said to David, Thou art not able to go out and fight that, that, that giant Goliath. Thou art only but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. You see, all Saul could see was Goliath. He couldn't see God. But David, he was the optimist. He said, Let not thy heart fail because of him. Thy servants shall go out and fight the Philistine. Why? Because David was the optimist. He couldn't see Goliath. All he could see was God. 
It was the same with Joshua and Caleb. My goodness me, when the twelve spies went in to see the land, only two were optimists. The rest of them were pessimists. We be not able, the ten spies said, we be not able. The cities are walled. There's giants in the land. No, we be not able. But Joshua and Caleb, when they came back, they came back with a good report, and they said, oh, but hold on a minute, Moses, we be valuable. Don't let your heart fail. I wonder this morning, child of God, are you a pessimist Christian? The problem outweighs God in your estimation. Or would you be the optimist Christian. Another great way saying, Churchill said, you'll never reach your destination. Listen what he says. You'll never reach your destination if you stop and throw stones at every dog that barks. That's what he said. You'll never reach your destination if you stop and throw stones at every dog that barks, what does he mean by that? He mean, meant this. This is what he meant. You'll never achieve, you'll never fulfill your goal if you stop and try and deal with every problem that comes across your path. It's the same of being a Christian. You'll never fulfill the purpose that God calls you to. And you'll never achieve in fulfilling the plans that God wants to bring you into if you stop and try and deal with every doubt and fear that comes barking at you. You'll never do it. If I had a stopped and listened to every fear and every doubt that come barking at my ears, I would never have been here as pastor. Not at all. Oh, no, no, no. You'll never reach your destination that God wants you to reach if you continue to listen to the devil's distractions. You know what all this boils down to this morning? It all boils down to the kind of attitude that we have. Do you know what Sir Winston Churchill said about attitude? Your attitude is a small thing that makes a big difference. Your attitude is a small thing that makes a big difference. People blame money. People having money. People blame people having possessions. People blame about people in power. But it's the attitude of that person. When it's all boiled down, it's the attitude that either makes that person or breaks them. Attitude is a little thing that makes a big difference. You know, child of God, your ability to succeed in this life, your ability to succeed in the Christian life, your ability to succeed in your walk with God is all down to one choice. And that choice this morning is how you address your attitude. How you apply your attitude this morning will determine your outcome, and it will determine my outcome as far as my spiritual life is concerned. My attitude and your attitude will determine whether your life, my life, our life will be a failure or will bear fruit. 
Paul the Apostle, in this final note to these Philippian believers, seeks to address this morning the attitude of these believers. My text this morning is where Paul writes in verse number 8. Take a good look at it. This is what Paul writes. This is what the Holy Spirit inspired Paul to write. Every word in Scripture was inspired. And Paul writes this this morning, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, he says this, think on these things. Do you know what God wants to do with the whole lot of us this morning? And nobody more so than me. He wants you and He wants me to adjust our attitudes. Because sometimes, child of God, it's our attitudes is the biggest problem. We blame the devil on this, and we blame the devil on that, and we blame the devil on the other, when sometimes it's down to our attitudes. And maybe this morning, child of God, you and I need to adjust our attitudes. Here's the $60 million question this morning. How many things that appear in verse 8 controls our attitudes. First and foremost, here's what the Lord, through the pen of the Apostle Paul, says. We are to contain thoughts of, of truthfulness. Listen to what he says. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are honest, think on these things. You and I are ever going to adjust our attitudes. The first and foremost theme of thought should occupy our minds this morning are thoughts of truthfulness. We need to adjust, and we need to adapt our attitudes upon everything that is true, not what we think is true, but on everything that is true. You know, child of God, it's like putting a building up. Our attitudes are only as firm as the foundation. And this is the attitude that God wants you and I to adjust this morning and to adapt to. It first begins with thoughts of truthfulness. Thoughts that are solely based on Scriptures of truth. What did the Lord Jesus himself say in Mark 7, verse 24? What did he say? He said, I will liken him, the man who, whosoever heareth my word and doeth it, I will liken him as to a wise man that buildeth his house on the sand, or on the rock, sorry. Whoever heareth my word and doeth these sayings of mine, I will liken him as unto a man that buildeth his house on the rock. 
We often use that illustration or those words as a gospel illustration. Let me tell you, it's very applicable to the life of the Christian. This is the attitude God's Word calls us to adapt to, that our attitudes are saturated and are controlled and engulfed and shaped by the truths of God. Perhaps this morning there's somebody here and you're struggling as a Christian. You're struggling in your walk with God. And this morning, this morning your attitude is your problem. Oh, we can blame this one, and we can blame that one, and we can blame the other one, but it's our attitude's the problem. Our attitude. You see, child of God, here's the problem. Do you ever, do you ever remember the times before the dishwasher was invented? And you go and you bring the dishes and you put the dishes into, into the sink. And before you put the dishes in, man, the water is lovely and crisply clean. Hard to bit a wee squirt or two or fairy and a wee shake of the hand, boys, everyone's perfect. That's why my hands are so soft. <laughs> and then you start putting, <laughs> you start putting the dishes in. And you start cleaning the dishes. What happens? Then the water becomes contaminated. The water becomes dirty. And then suddenly what was once clean and clean has now become contaminated. And suddenly there's a scum appears on the water. What do you do? You leave it there? You keep on washing away? What do you do? You unplug the sink, don't you? And you let all that scum and dirty water out and you refill the sink again with clean water. You see, the big problem with too many Christians is this. And perhaps all of us, myself included, have the same problem. We don't deal with the scum and the filth that has entered into our minds and attitudes. Our minds, our attitudes, needs to be continually flushed and flushed and flushed by the Word of God. Do you know what self-instructed attitudes do? They keep believers from church. They blame this and because we don't go to church anymore. They blame that and they blame the other thing. But it's their attitude's the problem. And the Word of God teaches us this morning that we have to continue to renew our minds by the Word of God. Paul says, sanctify and cleanse the church with the washing of water by the Word. Our minds need to be constantly flushed with God's Word. Dr. Viktor Frankl endured the Holocaust, which saw the cruel murder of his family. He was the only one left out of all the family. And the Nazis starved him. And the Nazis beat him and they tortured him. 
but he survived the Holocaust. When the war ended, Frankel said, I chose for my attitude to be in the midst of such suffering that my attitude will be fueled with God's truth. I made the choice that God's truth, God's Word, would be the control of my attitude. And instead of hating the Nazis, I've loved them and I've prayed for them. Tell me this this morning. Is your attitude under the control of the Word of God? There's nothing more true and there's nothing more honest, and there's nothing more just than God's truth. And I think that's what's wrong with too many believers today. They don't read God's truth the way it should be read. And God's truth is not being applied the way it ought to be applied. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, think on these things. Thoughts of truthfulness. You take a wee look into that verse again, Paul continues. Whatsoever things are pure. You know, friend, this morning we've got to fuel our minds and our attitudes with truthfulness, but we've got to fuel our minds and our attitudes with pureness. When God says this morning, and Paul said, whatsoever things are pure, do you know what that means? That means def free from defilement, free from contamination. Many persons this morning, many believers, get their minds into such a state that it soils everything which they thing. Do you know what 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 5 says? Love thinketh no evil. Now here's what the Lord wants to say to somebody in this meeting. Perhaps somebody has annoyed you. Perhaps somebody has said something to you. Perhaps somebody this morning has done the dirt in you. And might, wait till I tell you, maybe that person is a believer too. And maybe it is something that has happened many years ago. And maybe in recent days, I don't know, I'm just saying what the Lord's telling me to say. The Lord has brought it up to your attention. And you've been living with it. And it has been controlling you all these years. And it's been hindering you in a Christian walk for half a lifetime. And maybe so much so, that's why you don't stay at the Lord's table. The Lord this morning wants you to adjust your attitude. For mind you, the devil can taunt the thoughts. Wonder this morning, 
Do we need to listen to the words of the Apostle Peter, 1 Peter 2, 1 and 2, laying aside all malice, all guile, all hypocrisies, and all envies, and all evil speaking? There's too many believers today, and they spend more time dotting their eyes and crossing their T's, doctrinally that is, Theologically, doctrinally, they're correct, but sometimes we focus too much on dotting the I's, crossing the T, that we fail to check and see if the spelling's right. No use dotting I's and crossing T if the whole thing's not spelt right. Doesn't mean anything. What am I trying to say? What's God trying to teach me this morning? What's God trying to teach you this morning? This is what He's saying. If we are so good at saying we believe this, and we're good at saying we believe that, and, it's, and, and we're good at saying, and we believe the other thing, but our lives don't spell out what we say. There's a word that describes that, and the word is hypocrisy. And there's a lot of believers today. I believe, need to grow up. I know more grown men today, honest to goodness. They're men by age, but they haven't. They're not men by, by, by their attitudes. Say one wee thing wrong, and they're huffing like a child. I don't know how... Some of these men would survive out in a building site. They wouldn't. You see, we blame this and for hurting us, and we blame that and for saying this. Listen, maybe somebody has said something. Maybe somebody has hurt you, and this morning your thought life is contaminated by jealousy, by envy, by anger. Having impure thoughts is not all about looking at a woman and looking at her in a lustful way, brother. Impure thoughts mean having think, thoughts of jealousy, having thoughts of envy, having thoughts of covetousness, having thoughts of anger against another brother and another sister. And this morning, God has raised something recently, and this morning, God wants you to address it. He wants you to do something about it. What's sad today, a whole lot of believers' lives does not spell what they say with their lips because they are driven with a fleshly attitude. I read a story this week about two men out camping. And they built a wee campfire. It was getting neat. And when the campfire was lit, one of the men saw a, a snake trying to come out of the flames. He reached in and grabbed the snake to rescue it, and the snake bit him. And he shook it off. It fell into the flames again. And there it was, and the man could see it in such great distress. He reached into the flames again to pull him out, and the snake bit him again, and he shook the snake off again. He went to reach in the third time. His friend stopped him and says, Don't be stupid. The snake has bit you twice already. Why do you want to be bit the third time? The man quickly turned to his friend and said, Listen, it's in the snake's nature to bite. But I'm not going to change my nature by not helping it. Maybe you have been hurt. Maybe this is why you're struggling as a Christian.
because you've been hurt by what other people have said. Or perhaps, perhaps done. Don't you change your attitude. To bring it down to a level where you want to hurt them back, you adapt your attitude this morning to the place that God wants you to continue to love them. In spite of what they say about you, in spite of what they do to you, in spite of what they have done, don't you stop loving them and stop praying for them. And the Lord has brought something up to you in recent days, and you know it's not right. And God wants you to adopt your attitude. <coughs> By containing thoughts of pureness. Whatsoever things are true, dear. Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, think on these things. Ah, but look at it again. Whatsoever things are lovely. You know, I think that's a great thought life. You know what that means? That means to meditate on, on, on conduct that is pleasing and its motive and actions towards others. It means be gracious. Remember in our Bible class, we looked at that verse, 1 Peter 4, verse 8, having fervent charity among yourselves. That means having undainted love. Take a wee look this morning at verse number 8. And every time I look at verse number 8, I see a face staring out at me. Can you see a face staring out at you at verse number 8? You say to me, George, I can't see a face. Let me reveal the face that's staring out at me in verse number 8. I see the face of the Lord Jesus. Whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, those words unveil the face of Christ to me. Did the Lord Jesus not say, I am the truth? Is he not the just one? Whatsoever things are pure, oh friend, that certainly unveils the face of Christ before me. Because in him there was no sin. Whatsoever things are lovely this morning. He is the altogether lovely one. And look what it says this morning. And whatsoever things are of good report. That reveals the face of Christ to me. Because of that day when the heavens opened and God the Father said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. What's God saying this morning? I'll tell you what he told me during the week. If you, don't want, if you want this morning to develop a proper attitude, as what a Christian should have, focus on Christ and on Christ alone. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, think on these things, love. Paul didn't say, whatsoever things get you down, whatsoever things annoy you, whatsoever things hurt you. No. But that's what you've been doing. And that's what God wants you to do this morning. Adopt your attitude from this old negative attitude onto the positive attitude that Christ is all in all. There's too many running about with a negative attitude. I used to work with a lad in my circular employment. Monday morning I was going in like the spring, with a real spring in my step. And listening to him moaning and groaning about everything, my batteries were flat about 11 o'clock. 
Do you ever work with somebody? Do you ever live with somebody? And they're always negative. The sun's shining bright. Ah, oh, but it could rain again dinner day. There's a friend I know who drives a church bus. And he was telling me the story about these two ladies, and one of the ladies is always negative. And her friend was sharing with her other friend how she was suffering terribly from jet lag. She was over in Australia to see her daughter, and she'd flew home again. And, and she was so busy telling about how she suffered from jet lag. And for those of who have suffered from jet lag, uh, you can suffer from. But this other lady, beside her, she says, jet lag? How long did you suffer jet lag for? Oh, she says about six days I wasn't right. Six days? That's not jet lag, she said. She says, I suffered six months from it. <laughs> six months? Oh, don't talk to me. It put me off flying for life. The other woman turned around and says, Hester. How should you call the wee woman? Hester. Where were you that you got that jet lag? She says, I flew in from the Isle of Man. <laughs> There's people like that, you know. Listen. Do you know there's a wee verse you want to write over that one verse this morning? I'll tell you what it is. It's Philippians chapter, chapter 2 and verse 5. You know what it says? Philippians 2 and verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. What a lot of Christians need to do today is to adopt and adjust their attitudes and stop blaming everybody else for the spiritual shipwreck where they are. And may our prayer be the words of our closing hymn, where it says, May the mind of Christ my Savior live in me from day to day by His love and power controlling all I do and say, Child of God, maybe this is the call. Maybe this is the challenge to your heart this morning. Adopt your attitude. And whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report and hath virtue and worthy of praise, think on these things. And God will bless you for it and you will know victory because of it. May God bless his word to our hearts this morning. Six hundred.